All right, welcome everyone to the live stream. You may think something's wrong because I'm streaming at 10.30 in the morning, but everything's good. We got a big list of things to do today and get done. Um, so I wanted to, since everything is happening really quick these next couple days, this is gonna be disassembled and I probably won't have that on camera. So I just wanted to go through my thoughts on first going over how I built it uh, and then as I take it apart, explaining why I did a couple of things that I did. So if you're wondering what this is, this is the microwave and fridge stack for John and Susan's van. And uh, the idea behind this was to raise the refrigerator off the ground so that when you open it, it's conveniently right here and you're not having to bend over and get stuff out. Um, which I think is a, it's a great idea. Um, I see it in some vans, but uh, I haven't built anything like this before. Um, and I think this is pretty cool. Um, teaching wise, this incorporates almost anything that you could ever want to think of when scrubbing wood, cutting panels, uh, building something custom to hold, you know, a defined set of things in your van. So this could be a microwave, it could be hanging closet, it could be a uh, chest of drawers. Um, really this could be anything. It's just this form factor, we're using it for the microwave and uh, refrigerator. Now there's a couple things to consider. If this was a closet or drawers or something like that, then um, obviously it wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't really overdo the structure of this. Uh, so this is pretty beefy, um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top to the bottom as far as disassembly, and then we'll kind of go over it. Uh, the goal is when I get done with the stream today, I'll have this prepped, and it'll be ready so that I can take this face frame piece and... Uh, I'm still considering how I'm going to do this face frame piece. Um, I may do a different method. So, uh, yeah, a bunch of things have changed in my mind as far as how I'm going to tackle this because, one, this has to be fully disassembled, uh, painted, and then reassembled in the van. You can't, you can't, even if it has nothing in it, you can't take this and then put it in the van because it won't. Fit. It has to be built in place. Um, so that's another thing I wanted to cover is how this is going to be disassembled. Um, it won't be in this video, but this is just kind of me going through my thought process. Uh, also, if you guys have any questions, um, definitely put those in the chat. I've got my phone beside me. All right. So what I'm using is a combination of a bunch of things. Um, I'm using pocket hole screws to hold the main components together. And then uh, something I really enjoy is it's these, uh, they're called six by one inch uh, Power Pro. And they require no pre-drilling. And it's been really nice because this Baltic birch is really hard. And uh, saving the time to pre-drill a hole and then use these, uh, um, like a normal screw kind of takes a bunch of time. Anyway, we're going to get right to it. And the first thing, uh, we're going to go and do some pocket hole screws. So how I have designed this, and you'll see as I remove everything, but um, even with my engineering background and kind of pre-planning things, and I talk about this a bunch in the live stream, uh, even though I draw this on paper, when you get into the real world and you're working with a van, uh, the curvature of the van, where you've set the floor, the final floor height, um, where the adhesive has been put, uh, everything kind of changes. So if you build this by a drawing and put it in a van, it's going to not look good. It's not, it's not going to fit well. So learning how to scribe um, corners, contours, and stuff like that, you know, being handy with a jigsaw, that is what's going to make the, this look seamless in a van, uh, make it look very professional. So to do that, uh, now this is just my take on it, but you have to have a, a different approach to a building method. 
And so what I do is, this base down here is a drawer, and that's pretty simple. We're using two by four construction so we can hold the weight of all this. Um, but when you get to the bottom of the fridge and now you start to come up, um, in my experience, there's a lot of things that I have ran into that uh, I didn't anticipate. So I kind of came from a world of, you know, if we just measured it perfectly, you know, and a bearing goes in this, this hole, then it gets press fitted, you know, those type of tolerances. But here, if I measure this perfectly, uh, the human aspect comes in to where, how do I, when I'm holding this and I'm trying to shove it into this hole, I need, I need some additional clearance and some wiggle room, uh, as you say, to get this into its uh, final position. So to get that wiggle room, what I'm doing is the offcuts of my half inch uh, Baltic birch, I'm taking and I'm actually stacking on different parts of the build so that when I have a cross piece like this two by four, for example, I have it raised and um, this does not have to be specific. This is just giving you a gap so that when you can, you can fit the fridge in um, and not bind up. Because uh, you, rem remember, you're going to be in a very tight space. So we're in the shop right now. And if we take this fridge out, we've got tons of room to move it in and out. But imagine this fridge messed up and it's in your van. And you need to unbolt it and take it out in your van. Um, if you built it very tight, it would be almost impossible to uh, tilt this and get it to come out of your van. And I've learned that through experience from the uh, other adventure van that I built, um, where I had to catch myself between putting two cabinets too close because I, I wouldn't be able to move the fridge out and do some wiring and then move the fridge back in. So I had to make sure I had enough room. So I just kind of copied and pasted that uh, mindset over here. So this is the fridge. Um, this cross member is the first piece. So I put the fridge in, put my spacer, put the two by four. And then the next thing I needed to do was figure out where this uh, fridge is. Now, um, I'm not talking bad or down about any RV fridges, but I mean, sorry, microwaves, but microwaves in general, um, it's a lot of stamped sheet metal. It's a lot of thin metal in general. It tends to bend and, uh, you know, it just sits awkwardly. Um, it's not that it's not a good product and you can't have a, a good looking finish, but uh, the honest truth is there's places where you put the microwave in, it's going to scent kind of wonky and it might lean backwards and you got to have to figure out how are you going to deal with that so that when you're done this it looks like a, a professional did it so um, when I came to this point and I put a piece that's where things got a little interesting so um, we're going to come back to that in just a second uh, I need to screw two holes in here and I'm going to jump around just a minute just because uh, before I did the live stream, I was in the middle of <laughs> finishing this up. So if I don't finish what I was working on, then uh, I'll mess up here. Okay, so I'm only putting two pocket hole screws in here because um, this is just a placeholder. And so these, so these are just for alignment purposes. So for example, when I go to take this out in just a second and I glue everything up, when I go to put it back in, this screw is going to find itself and get exactly in the same position. I've also taken a pin or a pencil and I've marked the top. And it's just a visual reference. Um, so let's go ahead and... Now that this is, uh, you can see I'm using clamps at the base and as I go up, um, it's extremely important. Uh, so actually, to be honest here, this panel, I pre-fit this panel in the van. 
I contoured the top to the curved ceiling. And then down here, I had some type of weird, the base was sitting weird. It is kind of off like an eighth of an inch um, at the bottom. Like it was perfect at the bottom and it came up was off a little bit. And uh, I just kind of go with it because sometimes in a van, <clears throat> things are off and it's gonna look great in the end, but and it, I'm still back and forth between if I want to use that. I think what I'm going to do, since, the, uh, since I have such a thin pieces of reveal here, is I'm probably going to do a different construction method. So um, probably the way that normal carpenters do a face frame. So we'll do some type of... Uh, uh, I'm going to say lattice. I forgot what the word is. Anyway, I'll do, probably do something different today, but I got to do this today, paint it and paint the <clears throat> um, transition, the uh, divider wall. So that's what's on the list. All right. Let's start taking this apart. Um, so where I left off making sure that this is perfect is this up here needs to be 24 uh, and an eighth. And we've got, I'm sorry, this needs to be, let's see what our base was down here. Yeah, 24 and an eighth. Then we come here, 24 and an eighth. And we got here, I'm sorry, 24 and a 16th. That'd be too early for me already. 24 and a 16th. So 24 and 1 16th of an inch is, so this is perfectly true from the bottom to the top. It's perfect. And these two by four pieces have, as long as those are cut perfect, then everything else will be perfect. Um, these are just, these clamps are here because this is gonna be actually, these uh, pieces right here are gonna be this is pieces of poplar, so extremely rigid and strong, um, and very, very dense wood. And I want that because normally I drill and bolt this into 8020 or some type of aluminum, um, but this is gonna be going into wood. So I didn't want it to go into plywood or two by four, I wanted it to go into something hard. So this is a, this hardwood is a, this is what's gonna hold this into place. So, and it's gonna be wood glued, which is very, very strong. Um, now, let me explain the top here. What if I can twist this around? There's a lot of stuff I wanna tell, show you guys, because this is... Uh, Mm. I might just have to, I'm gonna have to show you photos. I took photos of the back. Uh, and so forgive me, but this is gonna be scatterbrained because I could just get a lot of ideas going on. So one of the most important things about this fridge rack is not just the strength and that it looks good. Uh, it's ventilation. So the back side of this is all open. So the where this sits on the piece of wood, it's cut all the way back to where only what is necessary to hold this is what's holding this. The back is completely open. Same thing here. There's a big old uh, side piece that goes around the back, a lot of airflow. Um, so let's go ahead and keep going. All right. Oh yeah. So this right here, you see there's a notch cut out. So it's really nice curved notch. That is to allow for uh, air heat to come out the top. If I use this panel, that is uh, to be determined today. But let's start taking this apart and I'll stop talking because you guys will kind of see what I'm talking about.
Okay, so we have this uh, frame bolted on here right now. Uh, I'm gonna try to slowly take it past the camera and see if you guys can see the frame. Uh, technically you wanna take the frame off and then take the microwave out, but I, um, I need to re re refit this a couple times. But as I pull this out, you see there's a stamped pan on the bottom and it's not really supported in the middle. And that is what's kind of a, a pain because it keeps flexing and you can't really get an accurate lay of how it's gonna sit in here. So the good news is that pan is not really, like that curve that you saw, that's not a big deal. As long as the sides are right, um, really an RV, microwave is really kind of held in by that face frame that bolts into it. Not mine, but the manufacturer's. Um, all right, next, you guys will get to see, so let's see, this is the back. I'm just kind of labeling this stuff so I can actually Put it back together. So this is the shelf. Back here it's notched out. You'll see that in just a second. And then up here is the rear support. Actually, I'm gonna leave that. I will temporarily take out this shelf here just so you guys can see. what I'm talking about. So I've notched it here. So this is notched for the uh, poplar sides. And then the microwave, this is the profile of the back of the microwave. So that back here, we've got a lot of uh, really good airflow. But I'm gonna put this back in, okay. Maybe you can see. Back here, we have another brace. I know it's hard to see, but um, and let's leave this out. Okay. Um, next we have the fridge. So I'm just going to go through here and make sure don't get anything. Okay, so we got our spacer back here, so it's gonna make the fridge kind of tight for a second, coming out. So again, there's our half inch Baltic birch spacer. And we want that because there's a, uh, down here, we've got about a half an inch of room. So we've got about a half an inch over there, but over here, we've only got uh, a quarter of an inch, or a little bit less, and that's because right here's where the hinge is. Now, after I paint this today, after I've installed and painted it, um, before I put this fridge back in, I'll need to reverse the door. And it's really easy to do. There's three screws here. You just take this, door comes out, you, put the, you just screw the bracket, bracket in over here. And then down here at the bottom, you've got these tabs that you'll just take these two door tabs and you just flip flop the bottom. Um, one pro tip is this door, there's this protective, there's this stainless steel protective uh, little sticker on here. Uh, when you take the door off, that's the time to actually take it off on this back side, because um, for whatever reason, this is not only wrapped on the side, it's wrapped from the side and the back here a little bit. So it's impossible to get the paper off, I mean this protective coating off, if you just take it off in this method. Okay, um, so we're gonna go nice and easy, take this fridge out. Now I'm gonna make this look easy, but this fridge is uh, it's pretty awkward.
Okay, now we're getting closer to pretty much the where I wanted to get to today. Okay, so this is the structure itself. So it's extremely rigid and it's not even glued yet. Um, all these sides will be glued into place. Uh, so it's gonna be nice and rigid. So I'm gonna spin this around. And then right here we have our ceiling contour. And then we have our, there we go. We got our ceiling contour, side profile of the van, our notch out here for our, our rivnut uh, bolts that go into the van. And then from here down is that partition, which will be all bolted um, and glued together. As we come around the back side, um, you can kind of see some of more of our structural pieces. Now back here, there's going to be a uh, for like cabinets. Some people call it like a nailer board. Uh, for us, we're going to this is what's going to sheet metal screw into the van. But back here, we've got this piece. And then what we have is, uh, right here is where the Ford Transit window would be. We don't have one on the driver's side, but this is where the top part of it would be, and this is where the bottom would be. So this section is the transition between the top of the window where it rolls back in. So you've got the sheet metal of the van, and then this is the top high roof section. So right here is a structural member, and we're going to... Um, glue and bracket this piece in, and then we're gonna drill into this. So we'll have a rivnut bolt up top for side-to-side -side movement. This will be bolted into the back of the van. The bottom will be bolted into the floor. And then we'll have some uh, additional brackets probably over there. So that's how this is gonna be built into the van. Now, the reason that everything has to be taken apart is because these panels have to be leaned into position. So the, really the only thing that I'm going to be gluing is that piece of uh, poplar board. That's going to be glued and screwed to the side for the front structure. And then when we get into the van, we'll take out, we'll reinstall all of these uh, two by four pieces. Um, So this side, this is where our EcoFlow controller is and our Webasto controller are going to be drilled and cut out. And we're going to be using two products to do our, fill our holes and imperfections. Um, the first is going to be for the small stuff. So that is any type of... Uh, these little biscuits that got it cut out into it. It's a really fine finish, but I've already tested this, so this is going to take care of hiding um, all of these. And then for the screw holes, are a little bit more aggressive. Let's see if I can find what we got. Okay, I think it's out in the van. Anyway, it's a, it's like a plastic filler, plastic wood filler. Um, so it contains wood fibers and it's really strong. It does a really good job covering it up. Um, so that'd be like this stuff on the outside that we needed to uh, drill holes just to get started. And then we're gonna fill in later. But I've already tested that on a test panel So this is the test panel right there, and this color, I mean, it is so awesome. But yeah, this test panel, everything is, you know, any imperfection, any drill hole, everything is hidden. 
Um, so it came out really good. The finish is great. This is stuff called uh, Scuff-X. So I can, I'm t literally taking my nails here and there's no scratches whatsoever. So it's really good, really good stuff. Okay, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, it's an early stream today, but it's going to be short because I got to get back to it. But just wanted to see if anybody was uh, on this early in the morning. Okay, so I'm going to put this piece back in. So we'll see if we can, if we have our lines. We can go through. And see, the screw is just going to find its you know, home that it had earlier. All right, nice. Okay. So now what we have to do is now we're going to build our face frame off of this. So that will be our next step. So I'm going to use this first because I've, I've already traced out everything that I want to cut out of this. Um, but the reason I didn't like this one earlier was because for some reason the uh, Well, I take that back. It's actually not not bad. Huh. <laughs> so that's why I like using uh like 8020 and stuff like that is uh wood can be a fun thing to work with, but sometimes Accuracy of the uh, 8020 is nice, but again, everything's everything's got pros and cons. 8020 is very expensive, so. All right, that is not okay. So, for some reason, that eighth inch that I was off, I thought it was going to be, or sixteenth inch I was off, was going to be a little too noticeable, but. Um, yeah, I can definitely sand and prep the edges and it's gonna, I'm gonna be happy with the finish. All right, that's very good news. So, that, that makes this even faster to assemble today. Um, and let me show you this top part. So, let's see if this top part is in focus of the camera. There we go. So, you see that dip at the top? So imagine that you have your, so let's grab a piece of cedar. And so you can see the cedar ceiling is bent like that. And so what this is, you're going to have your microwave, but this is necessary. Um, I see a lot of builds where everything is just very tight and there's no circulation whatsoever for any of the appliances and that's a big no-no. Uh, number one, your van is completely shut during the daytime, it gets really hot inside. And uh, even if you're in the van and have ventilation, the appliance has got to, they've got to breathe. So what I have here is this is, um, Basically, I took, a, like I have a bottle of vitamins, <laughs> and all you gotta do is you just take the cap off, 
And if you take the cap and you put it up here and you trace around the cap, um, that's how I get my radiuses, if you're wondering. It's a little, little hack. But this is in um, using that cap and just visually, this is an inch and a quarter. So that inch and a quarter, it looked, it looked like something you would, you would see, you know, style-wise. Just a nice cutout. Um, and so that is going to allow this to, to breathe. So in the very back, the bottom left-hand side in the garage, there's going to be another one of these. Um, so it's going to be very subtle. It's going to be right behind the battery. You'll barely see it. But that allows the convection, uh, the air to convect. So it goes from the bottom, that cool air in the garage area um, will come, come straight up through all the appliances and then exit out here. And then back here, we've got our max fan. So like you'll never know that this is happening during the day, but that air will be kind of coming up through here because the heat's going to rise and it's going to be able to breathe. And that, that's what you want, especially if you have a microwave and a fridge in the same space. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to, if you guys are just going to hang out with me, I'm going to put some additional clamps on here. Um, so that I can square this up and then I'm going to start the process of actually going through and tracing tracing what I need to trace to get this uh, nice and square and so I'm laughing because, uh, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I surprise myself because the other day when I cut this, I used the track saw because uh, the van, the shop's kind of cramped right now. Um, as you can see, the van, their van's right here. But I needed to just take off a certain amount of this panel, <laughs> but the van was in the way, so I had to use my track saw instead of the uh, table saw or the cabinet saw, and uh, I thought this was not going to be as accurate as I wanted it to be. But if you're able to do stuff outside of the van, um, it is preferable because you know, working in the van, that's a tight spot. Okay. So bonus here is we verified that everything, all of our appliances fit in here perfect. Uh, we know how everything is going to be laid out. So um, we're, pretty good. we're pretty much good to go. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, tracing out where everything is going so I can cut this panel out. I'm going to decide to cut this panel out now that I, it is as accurate as I wanted it to be. So I'm pretty excited about that.
And so what I did, I'm just tracing the, I guess I could turn this around. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's out of alignment now because I've already got my lines done. This is more for you guys. Okay. Excellent. So now you can see this is the structure of the whole uh, cabinet fridge stack itself. So we'll use a track saw and we'll cut out these rectangles, uh, the drawer, the fridge, and the microwave. We'll leave the top because that's going to be um, just the way it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, glue everything together and then um, we're going to begin painting the panels. And I'm going to pre-paint and then we'll do any finish touch-ups inside the van. Um, I used to paint for a very long time uh, before I did the handyman stuff, so um, pretty good with doing stuff uh, inside the van as far as touch-ups. Um, if you use a roller, be really careful. You can get a really excellent finish just taking your time. Um, it's all, it's, it's what everybody says, it's all in the prep. So we're doing a base coat to let that dry, and then we'll start working on anything on the wood. So for example, this is really smooth, but it does have these little repair uh, inserts. So you need to paint it first to seal it. And then sometimes the grain is going to raise in certain areas. And then that's when you do your first sanding. Um, then we'll do some filler. We'll do a second coat. Um, then we'll do a little bit more filler. We'll sand it and then we'll do a final coat. It should be perfect. Even if you have to do four coats, this stuff uh, that we got This is what it's called. It's called Scuffex Benjamin Moore. And uh, yeah, you can recoat after two to three hours. So I can easily put three coats on in a day. Um, so that's, uh, that's the next steps. All right, I'm gonna take this front panel off and then I'm going to cut that off camera and then we'll see you guys in a follow-up with a painted cabinet installed in the van so excited to show you that make sure you guys are subscribed like this video and uh, turn on that notification bell I go live randomly throughout the week don't want you guys to miss out anything that's happening in the shop also check out vanbuilderhq.com for all the blog posts also the DIY van build cheat sheet it is a free cheat sheet that I made for you it is the last three years of all of my Amazon purchases organized into an Excel sheet that is free to download. It's got over 250 curated items. So if it's something I bought off of Amazon and it's came to the shop, it's on that list. So go ahead and check that out. Um, and then if you guys do want a custom build built by me, that is with Odyssey Custom Vans. So this van that we're doing is John and Susan's. This is part of their van and uh, that's odysseycustomvans.com. There's a link to schedule a consultation with me if you're interested in me becoming your professional van builder. Uh, love to have you on the schedule so give me a reach out at that link. Um, it's at the bottom of the page. It's a Calendly link so you just click it, uh, go to the calendar, pick a date and a time and it'll pop right on my calendar and uh, we'll chat about your custom van conversion. Alright guys that's it for this morning. We will catch up later on this project and um, as usual if you have any questions put those in the comments below be happy to answer them in a future video and that's all we got right now we'll see you guys in the next live stream